In this video, I will reveal how to do this epic maze effect of Imangaji. I saw this effect in one of the recent videos of Imangaji, and I thought it was such a cool effect. If you want to download the free assets that I'm using in this video, you can do so by joining the Discord down below. Also, don't forget to join my masterclass where I do even more deep dive videos like this. Now let's jump into it. Now to first go over the video, as you can see, there's a maze. It will zoom in a bit. It will show a navigator icon going through the maze. And then after a bit, it will find its way through the maze and then even break through the maze. We're first, of course, gonna design the scene, but then we'll animate everything after. So I have a couple of assets imported, as you can see, navigation, that's the nav icon. I have a maze also. And again, you can download these in the assets down below. Now, first I'm gonna create the background and I do that by creating a new solid. I'm just gonna make it uh, dark red for now. And you can of course also use a texture, uh, but this will work. And you create a new solid by pressing Command Y or Control Y. And I'm gonna center this, something like this. And then I'm gonna grab the navigation and I'm gonna scale it maybe a bit, but we're gonna first try to animate it. And we can always adjust this after, but we're now gonna make the path of which the basically our icon is gonna animate on. So let's see, I think it's cool if it starts around here. Uh, you just grab the pen tool and then you can just create a shape. Just click somewhere where you want to start, hold shift and then hold shift and then click to make a line. Now we do this basically along the path that you want and you can always adjust this a bit later if you're not happy with it. And then I'm gonna break through this wall and then the last point, there we go. Now open the shape and open the contents and open the shape and open the path. Then keyframe the path and copy this keyframe over. Now, if you go to the navigation and you just press P for position, you can paste this data on the position and it will basically animate along this path. Now that's cool, but as you can see, the timing is not perfect. It will also just go through the whole <laughs> sequence. And of course it also doesn't rotate. Now you can use the auto rotate feature if you want to do this quick, but we're not gonna use it for a specific reason. You can go right click onto a layer and then go to transform and then auto orient. And if you then do orient along path, it will basically rotate along the path. And of course you can press R for rotation, make sure that this first point is set right, as you can see, and it will automatically rotate along the path. And that's cool, but as you can see, it's really jerky and we don't want that, we want it to be smooth. So I'm gonna undo this, but you can use this feature if you want to basically do it quick. What we're now first gonna do is make sure that our path animation is the way that we want it. Basically what we want to do is press U to see all our keyframes, zoom in a bit. And then the first thing what I'm gonna do is select all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And that will basically smooth the animation already. But I also want to make sure that every time it stops, it will also wait a bit before it continues. And I do that by just copying the keyframe over, going maybe a bit more to the front and pacing the keyframe and this makes sure that basically it will stand still a bit so let's just drag these keyframes out a bit there we go like basically make sure that there's some space in between and we can adjust the timings later on you can just copy the keyframe over paste it so it basically stays a bit here stays a bit there do it with the other keyframes and then with this keyframe i actually want to do something else uh, basically i want to at the end make it stop and then it will first go back a bit. So we're just gonna drag this position over so it goes back and then it will after that shoot through and that's cool. Now, of course, we want to use the graph editor to make sure this is way smoother. And I do this by just dragging this keyframe down and making sure there's basically like a bit of a, a mountain so it ramps up and slows down and especially that slowing down makes this animation way more smooth and it's even easier to use the selection tool select one of these uh, keyframes drag it down and i'm just going to do the same if you want to you can even zoom in a bit and basically what we want to create is have uh, these beautiful mountains maybe this one goes even a bit too quick you can always go out of the graph editor and move a couple keyframes so basically making sure that there's a bit more space in between this even though it's a small movement i want it to be smooth as you can see this is exactly what we want now once you're done with that of course you want to do the rotation First, I'm gonna activate motion blur to make sure that this is a bit more smooth, makes the animation look way cooler. And we're first just gonna do the first corner and then after that, it's just rinse and repeat. So as you can see, it will stop here and this is the perfect moment for it to rotate to the next angle. So we just press R for rotation, set a keyframe, press U to see all our keyframes and then just see where it basically is to the next part. You can just move this parameter 
or you can just type it. It's minus 90 in this uh, case or this scenario. And of course, we can also select these keyframes and then easy ease them. You can also do this at the end. So you select all the keyframes and then easy ease them. And as you can see, this is way more smooth than the auto orient feature. Exactly what we want. Uh, if you want to, you can of course make sure that the navigation icon is a bit smaller, but we're getting somewhere. We just now have to do this for all the parts. I won't show you that, <laughs> that's a bit boring, but let's style this a bit further. First thing, what I'm gonna do is add a tint to this navigation icon and I'm gonna swap the colors. This will make it white. And then I'm gonna add a glow and we can really increase this by a lot to make sure that it's nice and bright. Then we can even add a noise to this. Make sure use color noise is off and we can add a bit of texture to this by adding a bit of noise. It doesn't have to be much, maybe 20% or something. Now that's already really cool. I really like this. Of course, the navigation needs to be on top of our maze. I'm just gonna quickly rotate it here to make sure that it's basically straight again. There we go. And then I want to do the breakthrough animation. As you can see, it goes back and then goes through it. But what I don't like per se is the timing. Basically wanted to really catapult and then break through. And this goes a bit too quick, as you can see when I play it. And to change this, I just use the graph editor. I'm just gonna move this keyframe down and move this keyframe down. And then I make sure that basically it will ramp up and then goes quite quickly, maybe a bit of a curve like this. Let's play this and let's see what it looks like. Can always, yeah, this is already way better. And maybe just the timing, uh, if I just go out, out of the graph editor and I can just move these keyframes over and let's play this again. As you can see, it really breaks through. It's like catapulting, pulling back and then boom, launching it through. Now, in my opinion, to break this maze is quite easy. And I would just do this by duplicating the maze, basically selecting a certain point that we want to make a break. So for example, I'm just gonna grab the pen tool and then I'm just gonna make two masks. So I'm just gonna, let's say, I'm just gonna break it like this, something like this. Then I'm gonna select the selection tool and then I'm gonna duplicate this by double clicking it, then hitting Command D. Let's open up our layer to make sure that the mask is duplicated and it is, so that's great. We can now again, double click it, right click, then we go to transform and flip horizontal. Or we can also just move this over and maybe zoom in a bit and then maybe adjusting the mask a bit to your liking. Maybe something like this. I'm just gonna adjust the mask a bit. So we basically have something like this. This is cool. Now I'm gonna duplicate this twice, this layer. One, two. And this is gonna be a left piece and right piece. And this is called maze. And then just make sure that these are both subtracted and subtracted. And then we go into the right piece we open that up and basically make sure that the mask, so this is in case mask two is on and the mask one, you can just delete. We go into the left piece and we do the same, but then the other way around. So we're gonna delete mask two. So we have a left piece, a right piece, and we have the maze. What's nice about this is that when you turn this off, you can see uh, basically you have one piece and we can of course animate these pieces. The alignment is not perfect, but of course you can adjust this a bit to make sure that where the arrow goes through, it also breaks. As you can see, the arrow already basically almost goes through. So we're gonna adjust that first. I'm gonna go into the position of our uh, navigation icon. I'm just gonna move it a bit. And let's just copy this keyframe over, make sure that it basically will stay a bit here. So it will stay and then drag back and then push through. And then on the moment where it pushes through, so around here, we're just gonna press P on the right piece and press P on the left piece and then press R on both and then set the rotation. Now, before we continue, we need to make sure that the anchor point is right. Because if we now rotate it, you will see what happens. It will move along the way, but this is not what we want. It will basically rotate around this anchor point that you can see here in the, in the middle. We don't want that. We want it to rotate around the anchor point. And we do this by setting the anchor point right with the pen behind tool. And you can just move this out. And then let's zoom in. And then let's see what we're gonna move it around. I think it's cool if we move it around basically the edge, so the right edge, and then on the other one, the left edge. 
So I'm going to select the other one, move the anchor point, zoom in, hold space to move your view around, and then we can set this here. And if we now rotate it, you will see what happens. It rotates around the right point, which is exactly what we want. We now go a, a couple frames further, and then we're just going to move this out of the way, something like this, and press R for rotation. I'm just going to rotate it a bit, something like that. Maybe move it like that. And of course, we're going to press U to see all our keyframes, select them all and easy ease them. And what I also want to do is go into the position and go into the graph editor, and then basically selecting the last keyframe and dragging that handle out so it really is smoothing down and then of course we can also turn motion blur on to really sell the effect and i think this goes even a bit too quick maybe we're going to move the uh, rotation and the position a bit out something like that and that's a really cool effect you can even slow it down even further we can even adjust the curve of course by using the curve editor and even like slowing it down more or dragging the first keyframe out so it really like blows out and then slows down now we do the same to the other piece and it's really easy. Just press P for position, press U to see all your keyframes, and then we're just gonna do the same. We can even basically look at our other keyframes to make sure that it's a bit the same. And then press R for rotation and rotating it a bit, maybe something like this. And of course, again, right click, easy ease. And as you might've noticed is that there's a small piece left and that's because the basically the maze or like the subtract mode hasn't been working well. There's basically a bit of overlap. You can easily adjust this by going to the original maze layer and just making sure that they, uh, the masks overlap a bit. So it's really subtracted. Now this is perfect, exactly how we want it. Of course, add motion blur too. That's really cool. But of course we need to add a couple of things I'm just gonna go back to our example and we see a couple things. Uh, of course, it, this is more like a cloth uh, image that's in the background. We can always add that later. The glow is a bit different. It's a bit more yellow, I would say. I'm not sure if I even prefer that, but what I do see is this Northeast Southwest, uh, like uh, text come in and this is really easy, guys. This is literally just uh, like a position and there's some movement in here, basically with a null object. And of course there's some vignetting and some distortion. And I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do this. I also think there's a glow basically on top of everything. So we can do that at the end. But to do the animation, I'm just gonna create a new a null object. I'm gonna move this up and I'm just gonna basically make sure that everything is linked to the null object. And then you can just scale and position this. You see, you don't always have to use 3D layers if you don't need to. And even after 10 years of After Effects, I try to avoid it because 3D also over things it adds more data to work with uh, and you can sometimes really easily just uh, like i said scale this up maybe use a position press p to set the position uh, and then you can also move it around a bit of course you can also ease these keyframes uh, if the uh, layer or the background layer is not big enough you can just select it and we can just of course scale it same if this was a cloth layer now for the north east south west uh, you can literally just pick any font that you want set an N here, of course, align it in the center, and then just set a P for position, and then just move it in, drag this out, and make it go from up, make it a bit like light white, grayish, and it will move in. And of course, you can also link this to the null object. And now we're just gonna add some camera effects. And we do that by going to, into layer new and then adjustment layer. And then of course we can add a glow to this and this will basically blend everything a bit together. Now we need to play a bit with the threshold and of course with the radius also. And for the lens distortion, we can use CC lens, uh, which is an option to just add it to it, which is a cool effect anyway. And you can just uh, increase the size really high to maybe like, uh, I would say maybe 400 or 300. Let's see what this looks like. And as you can see, there's some distortion in it, or you can use the VR chromatic aberration. And so we can just delete the CC lens, set the fall of distance to zero, and then you can change the vertical and the horizontal field of view. And as you can see, this also creates some distortion, also creates some RGB distortion. This could be an effect that you'll want. I think a CC lens effect is in this case way easier. And then of course we can add a simple vignette and I always like to use a solid. So just use a black solid in this case and we just press okay. Then use the ellipse tool, double click that, then invert this, press F for feather 
and then you have a basic vignette. And why I like this way is because you have full control over your vignette. You can just open your mask. You can even add some expansion to it. Of course, you can animate it. Of course, you can also change the opacity to, of it if you think it's too harsh. You can just go into T for transparency. And then when you add everything together, you will get something like this. And I think it's such a cool effect. Also, these skills you can also apply in other projects. And if you want to learn even more skills, do join my masterclass. Link in the description down below. Leave a comment of what you want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe and then I'll see you next time.